Welcome to Matrix Tech Talk. In today's episode of Matrix Tech Talk, I'm going to talk to you about five reasons why automotive software development projects fail. In my experience, there are five main reasons why things go wrong in a project. Obviously, technical competencies, the processes, these are the usual suspects. However, there are certain things that are more important than that and often ignored. So I'm gonna share these five things with you today. So number one, the leadership ability of the project leader. Yes, the processes are important, the technical competencies are important. However, if the project lead lack the leadership qualities, the leadership attributes that is necessary to fulfill the project, the project is in trouble. So. I would recommend uh, a book by Jim Collins. It's called Good to Great. In this book, he highlights why level five leadership is the key element for a company to flourish from good to great. So that applies also in projects. So a good leader, a good project leader would bring enormous value to your project. So uh, what do we mean when I talk about great leaders? So a, le a leader in a project should have three fundamental qualities. Number one is empathy. He should be able to empathize with the team members. He should be able to put himself in other people's shoe and understand their perspective. Number two is he should be a good listener. He should have the ability to listen. Simon Sinek often talks about Nelson Mandela's leadership ability. Nelson Mandela learned his leadership abilities from his father. Mandela talks about his father being the chief of a tribe. He goes to his people and what he does is he listens. He, he, he listens to his people. There is a difference between hearing and listening. So a good leader would listen. Listen to people, listen to the team members, listen to the project and take a lot of input then uh, providing them with a one-way monologue. The third element of a project lead is the energy. For example, Gary V, the iconic figure of leadership energy, we see how he radiates energy around him. The amount of energy, the stamina that is needed in order to lead project, that will trickle down to the group, to the entire project team. So the project leader has to have that level of energy. It's great to be Scrum certified or any other project certification. This will give you the technical know-how, how to lead a project, how to organize a project. However, these qualities will make you a great project leader. Uh, if you're leading a project and you want to get your first hands on on this, these leadership qualities, I would recommend you a book from John Maxwell, Leadership 101. That's a great place to start. The second reason why I've seen projects failing, failing to reach deadline, failing to maintain quality, or failing to be executed within the budget is underperformers in the team. Yes, you heard me right. So your team is only as good as the weakest member of your team. So if when you have an underperformer in the team, it's not only one person who is underperforming, it has a, a ripple effect in the entire team. Dan Ariely talks about in his book, Predictively Irrational, how one person underperforming or not complying to the expected level has a ripple effect in the entire team. So when one person who is not performing as good as the others gets away with it, it kind of gives a subconscious message to the other members of the team. Why should I do so well when the other person is getting away with it? So the performance of your entire team goes down. This is really important. One underperformer is not one underperformer. That person is gonna take the performance of the entire team down. And it's not down by five, mere five, 10%. It is significantly down. Like Brian Tracy talks about, when is it a good time to get rid of the person that you want to get rid of? Whenever it comes to your head for the first time. 
So please, please do it fast. If you have to replace or get rid of the underperformer, do it fast. I've seen projects where people wait, people think, okay, he is just one person, we'll let him, uh, let him stay till the end of the, end of the project. These are blunders. You cannot really see the ROI of it, uh, the ROI damage of it in this case directly. However, please, please take this seriously. The underperformers are going to have an enormous damaging effect in your project. The third reason I've seen where projects fail is if you have blame gamers in your team. People who don't want to take responsibility or ownership for anything they do. They want to find excuses, they find out reasons to blame others. You have to identify these people and replace them. Here I would recommend a book from Jeb Blonde and the title of the book is Fanatical Prospecting. It's a sales book but there is a lot to learn about leadership from this book as well. Here he talks about a concept of a CEO attitude. You are responsible for everything. You take the blame for everything. At Matrix, whatever happens, whatever goes wrong, I take the responsibility. It's all my fault. So this attitude, if you can grow that kind of attitude in your team, the productivity will be enormous. The fourth very important point that I'm gonna mention is negativity in the team. If you have negative attitude in the team, that is going to slow you down. That is not only going to slow you down, that can have damaging effect in your project. So here, I'm gonna mention another book by Barbara Fredrickson. It's called Positivity. In this book, Barbara Fredrickson mentions her research in the corporate environment that how positivity can make things exhale at the same time how negativity can, can destroy productivity. Now, one thing to keep in mind, that negativity has more influence than positivity, and this is known as the negativity bias. In the corporate environment, it's usually three positive things that neutralizes one negative thing. So one negative person will have an enormous effect in your, in your project. So this, is, this also has an evolutionary explanation. So the reason our ancestors survived because they could pay attention to negativity more than the ones they perished. And that's why our flight or fight response was very, very useful back then. But today, in 2018, it's merely, in most of the cases, an evolutionary baggage. So please, please get rid of the negative people, the naysayers, or bring positive influence in your team. It usually trickles down from the leader. If the leader is positive, then the positive influence will be trickling down in the entire project team. Now coming to the fifth reason why I've seen projects failing in automotive domain is the delta between the processes, existing A-SPICE processes, and reality. Oftentimes what happens is you have a process defined the entire V-cycle very, very sophisticated, very well-written processes, but the delta in what happens in practice is way too big, and hence the pro processes are not compliable. There's oftentimes a myth that process slows you down. I totally, totally disagree with that. Processes are not there to bring more, new, more overhead. The processes are there to help you. If you combine ag agile methodology with A-SPICE, you will be more productive, getting things done much faster. Now, to be successful, you need processes. Processes are important, and you have to make the processes in a way that is compliable, that is reflecting reality. So here are the five reasons we talked about that can fail a project. Number one was lack of leadership. Number two was underperformers in the team. Number three, blame gamers in the team. Number four, negativity in the team. And number five, the delta between your A-SPICE process and the reality. I can't give you an ROI uh, if you fix this problem, what you're gonna gain, but what I'm gonna tell you is a automotive software development pro uh, project, the entire V-cycle is typically multiple seven-figure projects. So 
If you do not fix this problem, what I can tell you, it's gonna cost you a lot, even up to seven figure numbers. And if you fix some of these, what's, what is gonna bring you is also multiple seven figure. So which of these five reasons you have experienced in your project? We would love to hear from you. Please write in the comment section and we'd love to hear your experiences. In this podcast show, we bring in the industry leaders and experts in the automotive domain to share their experiences along their journey. The mission of our podcast is to start a dialogue that will allow us to understand the development of automotive industry and where the automotive industry is going. You can ask questions to our guests directly. Just send us an email to podcast at matrix.de. We'll schedule a call with you during the recording and you'll be part of our show. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. Please share this video to help others get enlightened as well and that would mean a great deal to us. See you in the next episode.